right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, go over to the website, look for this orange box, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, FronosPhoto.com, and this is a real world review of the Canon 11 to 24 f4 lens. Now we're out here at Independence Mall because we have Independence Hall behind us. We have the Liberty Bell over there, and this is a great place to run this lens through its paces. How's it going to be at 11? How's it going to be at 24? Who's it for? What's it for? Is it worth it? We're going to find out right now. So who is this lens for? Well, first off, it's expensive. It's heavy, but it's worth it if you need something to get those ultra wide angles. We haven't seen anything that shoots 11 millimeters like this. To have a range of 11 to 24, this is unbelievable. It's gonna be great for those low angle shots. It's gonna be great for photojournalist stuff. But you have to remember, with ultra wide angle, you have to fill the frame. You also have to be careful with your angles because if your angles are off slightly, it's gonna throw off the entire image. Now, another thing you have to keep in mind with this lens is it has the built-in lens hood, but you can't really put an ND filter on the end of it as of right now. Maybe companies in the future will make something that does that. So if you're a landscape shooter, you have to keep that in mind. So the first little test that I have is I want to go inside to the Liberty Bell Pavilion to shoot the Liberty Bell. I want to get those wide shots. I want to see how it looks at 11. I want to see how it looks at 24. But one of the keys is how is it at 11 with something at the edges? So will the bell stretch out even further if it's at the edge? Or what's it going to look like when everything's symmetrical? So I just have to keep my eyes open to see the angles because it's going to be interesting using this lens. So when I was inside shooting the Liberty Bell with the 11 to 24, 11 is so wide. Even when I got super close to the line that you don't cross or you get punched, it was still too wide. So the 24 is very nice at 24, but here's the key to the 11. Get down low. I love having that angle. You just have to look through the camera, see the angle, and you get these awesome, just really large, really cool looking shots. Now, when I was in front of the window shooting outside of the Liberty Pavilion, there was this kid there, and I'm still taking these wide shots, and it looks great, but I finally got him to get out of the way, and it gave me a clear shot of outside, and it looked fantastic. So, you know, one of the other things was laying down on the ground. It gave me the ability to shoot underneath the bell and get a huge wide angle of the group just standing in there looking at the bell. pretty happy with the images from inside the Liberty Bell. I love the ultra wide angles that tell the entire story where I'm laying on the ground. You have the bell in front of me. You have the people behind it. I'm shooting down low. Really great angle to get that shot. But one of my favorite shots inside is when that kid got out of the way and I shot out of the Liberty Pavilion and I shot Independence Hall behind me. So the next thing we're going to do is head over to Independence Hall behind me. I want to get the ultra wide at 11 to show you what that looks like, get the 24, but also see if I can get some group shots because there's a ton of groups around here and maybe somebody will be nice enough to let me jump in there and take some pictures. All right, so, so this is what I'm thinking, 11 to 24 ultra wide angle. I have to contend with the people walking by, so I'm going to try and get as few people in the pictures as possible, but I also have these like pillars, these pylons. I want to do some wide shots here just for the test so you can see what Ultra 11 looks like, how the edges look, because that's what I'm looking for. How's the sharpness? How are the edges, uh, the edge of the frame at 11? And what's it look like at 24? So you can see this is 11, this is 24. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to start doing it. Traditionally, you hear that it's not easy to blow out the background and get awesome bokeh with an 11 millimeter lens also at f4. 
But as you see with the pylons, I was able to get really close, close focus to it, and I could blow out the background at f4. And then at 24 millimeters, I was able to do it even more. So don't forget, you can still blow out the background. Just get closer to your subject and bam, blow it out. Wait till that car goes. This is so wide. So cool. That's 11. That is nice. So one of the things to remember with ultra wide lenses is that you have to be very level. You wanna make sure your lines are straight because everything gets thrown off when you're shooting something so wide at 11. So you wanna make sure that the ground or whatever your horizon is, is level. So if you're this way or this way or this way or this way, it may throw off your shot. So being very level and finding the straight lines is important. I don't like using the built-in horizon finders, the, uh, the levelers, I just think by eye you should be able to feel it out much easier than relying on the camera to do it because you can just look through the camera and see it yourself. This is what bad lines would look like. If you're not parallel to what you're shooting and you're just on this angle, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work for keeping it even and, and to keeping the line straight. Whereas if you do this, I am pretty darn straight. So that's what it's all about. So shooting the building at 11 was pretty cool. You get everything in there. The only issue I ran into was because of the time of day, the lens hood didn't exactly block all of the sun, so I was getting a little bit of flare at the top. But you know, the range of 11 to 24 is gonna give you such ability to shoot almost anything that you want. But when you can add dimension to your frame by having other subjects in it and getting close to them, it creates a much better image. For example, the horse is going by. It's just, you get the whole carriage and all the horse in there, and it creates some dimension and play in the images. So just because you can shoot ultra wide doesn't always mean you should do it, but when you do do it, make sure you have interest in your frame. So the 1124 is, is extremely wide, as we know. It's gonna be pretty cool for group shots. So what I'm gonna do is wait for a big group to come by and hopefully get some photos of them uh, either knowingly or not knowingly, but that, that's one of those things. You can ask for permission, but again, you're in a public space, but depending on where you are in the world will depend on if you can take photos of just anybody anywhere. So that's just one thing you have to pay attention to. So I wanted to walk over here. One, the, the light is better back here, but two, I just wanted to show you what 11 looks like and what 24 looks like. It's, it's, it's wide. So I wanted to find that group shot. And luckily enough, we had uh, some students in from Beijing, China, and I asked permission can I take a couple of photos to test out this lens? And they said, sure. And, and, and so I did. It gave me the ability to get those wide shots I wanted to try to get because what I'm noticing with this lens is just shooting wide with no, no, no interest in the image isn't gonna be that good. But when you have the two people, the chaperone standing here, and I've got the group in the background, and I have Independence Hall in the background, it adds dimension. So like I said, when you're shooting ultra wide, fill that frame, it's gonna create a lot of dimension. So it was great, and then at the very end, one of the students came up, asked if I could send them the photo, absolutely. Send me an email, and I'll send you the photo, because thank you for letting me do that. If somebody asks you for help because you look like you know what you're doing, give them help. It doesn't hurt. You know what you're doing. You can pass on some knowledge, help them get better pictures, and that's what it's all about. So you can't forget that this lens isn't just for stills. You have the ability to throw it on there and capture some video. 11 millimeter video looks awfully interesting as you're panning. Look at how everything just, it just widens. It's pretty insane, but you have the 11, you have the 24, you can, do, you, you can get those ultra wide pieces of video. It's nice to have in the bag if you can afford it. One of the things you have to be careful about when you're shooting video and, and also stills is that you don't have the ability to put a filter on the front of it right now to cut back on light. So that's just something to keep in mind.
So I really enjoyed using this Canon 11 to 24 f4. I think if you can afford it, this is a lens that should be in your bag. It's gonna be great for all of the things that we talked about, but if you wanna pixel peep and check out the files, go over to the website, click on the download button, and I will give you some DNGs to play with so that you can see if the quality fits what you are looking for. So that is gonna be it from Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. That's another real world review of the Canon 11 to 24 F4, Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. So if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you follow us on Facebook, go ahead and give this a share so other people can check it out.